You know, I love recording these because I always take the opportunity to share if we make a mistake or we make some error. And it was funny because I got ready to record from my utmost for his highest and was sitting down and going to talk about thirst and was trying to think of some scriptures that just recently I'd heard. And the humorous part was that my mind went blank and I kept thinking and waiting for the Lord, you know, and like, God, you always bail me out, so what's up? <laughs> you know, why can't I think? Why can't I share? Why can't I say something? And so I sat there just kind of waiting and nothing came. And it was interesting because it's so cute or it's so funny, I should say. My wife would say cute, I'd say funny, that I could be caught speechless and just blank because it happened so rarely. But with all that sometimes you do in different aspects of ministry when you're doing things sometimes you need to just stop because <laughs> you don't know what you're going to say and i did so i stopped and this is a redo a do-over so praise the lord what i was thinking of was that i had visited a small calvary chapel as a matter of fact but a small church and it was it was cute it was out in the middle of you know a quiet residential area and it was real small which is what I love because to me, you know, mega churches are not churches, they're just schools of learning. And in order to have a church, you need to be in a small fellowship of some type, like, you know, I always like to say about 12 people. <laughs> then you'll grow because you got to get along. But, you know, the, the point is, is that going to it was fun and it was great to see people and to hear them and to listen and to observe the things that were going on around. And the pastor was very good, you know, as I expected, and, and he had talked about being thirsty, and it's true, you know, a lot of times, unless you're thirsty, you're not going to drink. I mean, it's obvious that you wait until you're thirsty to drink something, unless someone tells you that you need to drink, you know. But usually your body has to tell you in some way that you feel thirsty before you actually drink water. And, you know, same thing's true about belief, you know, or about what people hold on to because a lot of times people don't want to hear the facts they want to hear what they want to believe in they want to be encouraged in what they're doing they want to be strengthened in where they think that they're supposed to go or what they're supposed to do rather than sometimes have to face the fact that either they might be wrong could be wrong or maybe it's not about being wrong but so much is about learning something more and so except a person is willing they're usually not going to listen. So in all of our ways, we should always acknowledge that God is working with us to help us to listen more than we speak, sometimes to understand where someone is coming from more than trying to tell them they're going the wrong way. And sometimes, if they're not thirsty, don't stick their head underwater because <laughs> they're not going to drink. So if if they're not interested in what you have to say, okay, leave it alone. So let it go your way. Now, I, I admit on the internet a lot of times I have to post things in comments because they'll say something about a scripture or something that they'll go way off on and I'll just say, well, there needs to be an alternative, so I'll just state that and let it go. So I'm not against the person. It's just whatever may be the, the point that's being made or the point of view that is wrong or somehow distorted or changed in some way rather than the obvious read of what you can read for yourself as you read it. Today, in utmost, <laughs> I indeed, but he, which always sounds interesting, I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire from Matthew 3.11. Have I ever come to a place in my experience where I can say, I indeed, but he? Until that moment does come, I will never know what the baptism of the Holy Ghost means. I am, I indeed am at an end. I cannot do a thing, but he begins right where I end. He does the thing no one else can ever do. Am I prepared for his coming? Jesus cannot come to you as long as there is anything in you in the way either of goodness or of badness. In other words, sometimes the good that you're doing gets in his way, and sometimes the bad you're doing is the same way. 
when he comes, am I prepared for him to drag into light every wrong thing I have done? Uh-oh. You mean that the Holy Spirit isn't just to give me power to go do my own thing? Is it? It is just there that he comes. As soon as I am willing that the Holy Spirit reveals in me all my sins, then he can empower me to be aware of and given that capability to share with others the same forgiveness that I receive for all that which is in me. Wherefore, I know I am unclean, he will put his feet. As soon as I know that in me dwells no good thing, then the Holy Spirit can come in and reveal and use you as he chooses, as he does me. Wherefore, when I think I am clean, he will withdraw and I go out on my own way, doing my own thing, thinking that I'm the one who has accomplished it with the power of God. And in reality, Jesus said that those marvelous works that you do in my name, depart from me, I never knew you, ye that, work it, ye that are workers of iniquity. Because you see, I have to recognize that God wants to reveal in me the sin that I so obviously see in others. And then he'll deal with me personally, as he will deal with the other person personally. We're not the Holy Spirit. We're merely vessels of His will being accomplished in us. Repentance does not bring a sense of sin, but a sense of unutterable unworthiness. I am not worthy, and boy do I know it. The grace that I have been given, I always say that if there was an opportunity to frustrate grace, I would have invented it. When I repent, I realize that I am utterly helpless. I know that all through me that I am not worthy even to bear His shoes much less to call him by his name. Have I repented like that, ever? Or is there a lingering suggestion of standing up for myself, asserting my rights? I am righteous. After all, those other guys, look at them. And in reality, when we judge, we fail because we are not put in a position of being able to judge because we are not righteous, and we cannot judge righteously. The reason God cannot come into my life is because I am not through into repentance. I have not come fully into the end of myself that he could be all of myself as his righteousness is made perfect in me because I know that in me I am unrighteous. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. John does not speak of the baptism of the Holy Ghost as an experience but as a work performed by Jesus Christ. He does it. It's not some filling of some supernatural power you run off and do your own thing. He shall baptize you. The only conscious experience those who are baptized with the Holy Ghost ever have is a sense of absolute unworthiness. I indeed was this and that, but he came and a marvelous thing happened. Get to the margin where he does everything. The less said is obvious about you getting credit and you saying, well, the Holy Spirit this, the Holy Spirit that, and the Holy Spirit everywhere, and then it actually being you. It's so much simpler when we simply let Jesus have the glory that he may turn it to his Father for the good works that he has done and not we. Because there is a fundamental fact in Christianity that a lot of people that have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit or been baptized in the Holy Spirit or have some capability often use it to their own benefit as opposed to promoting and revealing Jesus and the words which he said to do. I rejoice in the fact that I think that all that God has wanted for me, I am given, and that there isn't any good gift that he hasn't given me, so I believe that all gifts can operate through me and have at some point in time in my life, more so than other people, because I turn it to Jesus, and I reveal Jesus through that which he gives me. And that is what the purpose of the Holy Spirit was to do. First, to reveal sin in us, then to reveal how we could be forgiven from it, and then to go out and to share the same with others not to go off on some tangent and to take and use and abuse all these gifts and abilities that Jesus said that in the end, if you do, be careful, because if I don't know you, I don't care what you did with the Holy Spirit, it's whether or not you knew me. And that's what the Holy Spirit's ministry is for us, to know Him and to know His Father who sent Him. Be wise. Ask Jesus to show you what the Holy Spirit wants to reveal in you.